Hey, welcome to Thrift Shop. Today, we're going to do a headphone amplifier shootout. That's right. I have, is that, do I get all the fingers up there? Nine. I have nine headphone amps that I am going to talk about today. We're going to do a shootout, and we're going to see which one of these is the winner. So let's get started. So in the left corner, we have the iFi Pro iCan. Not the signature edition. This isn't the most recent version. This is a, an older one. Um, I will talk about it in greater detail. It is on. It's kind of using, uh, being used right now. So moving on. Oh, before we get started, I will say that I am using the Denifrips Ares 2 as uh, one of my reference stacks. The other is this Sonkaz. Um I don't even know which model it is. It's a bunch of letters and numbers, L, Q, V, something like that. Anyways, chip-based Sabre DAC. Um, nice little DAC, balanced out. It's one of the reasons that I like it. You got volume control. So uh, between these two, um, I can tell the difference between the amps and, and what they do. Um, moving down, we have the Drop THX AAA1. And then below that, another drop product, the Cavalli Liquid Carbon X. Moving over, we have the iFi Zen Air, the Shit Asgard 3, and the Shit Jotunheim 1 OG. Moving to the right corner, we have... The Kinky Studio THR1. Look at the beauty. Thing's amazing. It's a work of art. And lastly, we have the Dark Voice. Yes, this has been out for a long time. A lot of people use this, swear by it. It's been upgraded. Uh, it's got some. Nice tubes in it, some piss vein tubes um, in the front there, you can see. So, without a... Oh, I said nine, that was only eight, right? Did I count right? Did I count right? Oh, here it is. I got one portable. We're going to do one portable. Got to do it. I have others, and I thought I'd just do one portable to kind of talk about this and to see if it compares. So, with that said... Oh! Yes, headphone pairing. So, uh, Verum 1, Mark 2. Although, I just checked his website. He's up and running, thank God, in the Ukraine. He is still making headphones. He has updates there. So, um, kudos to him for uh, making it through and, and making some amazing headphones. Um, go check out Verum Headphones, Verum Audio. And for three forty nine, probably one of the best investments you're going to make in a headphone and these are absolutely amazing i love these uh 10 ohm so they are easy to drive um, high sensitivity um, in comparison though um, the other headphone that uh, i use is the uh, hyphen he 6s ev2s um, these do have upgraded pads in them at the moment uh, these are Dakoni sheepskin and uh Rather nice. So, um, anyways, uh, I don't have any uh, dynamic drivers. Um, over the last year, I sold off all of my headphones um, uh, just because I like to wear them so much. I just uh, don't feel the need to have all the headphones hanging around. So, some of these amplifiers, um, you know, I'm going to be talking about uh, kind of my history with them and uh, whether they're still relevant or not. Uh, based on you know the past basically three years of using them so um this review shootout whatever you want to call it is long overdue very very long overdue anyways where should I, where should we get started first of all i just did the review so you probably just saw this posted maybe a day ago um a day or two um I find Zen Air, get this for a DAC, don't get it for a headphone amp. I really had a problem with it using uh, the Verum Audio um, headphones. The 10 ohm headphones really did not work. 
uh, really strained the op amp output of this headphone amplifier. So, um, yeah, you know, this is great. It's just not um, really a good headphone amplifier. Great DAC, just not a good headphone amplifier. So, first one booted off the list is i fi Zen Air, only because it's a better DAC. Next, which one should we talk about? I am going to go with number eight on my list, which is the drop triple A1. You can see I had it on the highest gain setting to run this. Um, literally, I plugged this in and I started to listen. I ran in the other room. And I plugged in a passive preamp to my Denifrips Ares 2 at the time I was running it in my main system. And the sound was exactly the same. So this is basically like running a passive preamplifier in your system. That's the kind of sound that you get from this. It's super clean, but it's not full bodied. And that is not what I'm looking for. I understand why people think that this is detailed, articulate, uh, you know, these um, kind of uh, THX systems, but really you're just not building up the note with the preamp. That's fundamentally what's happening. So for me, I understand it, but this is not my cup of tea. Um, I like a nice full bodied, you know, kind of like a, a nice black, coffee i don't know um anyways uh you know for the price it's 150 bucks i think actually that's uh, i got it at the early uh early bird special so it was 150 i think it might be 200 now um you know not really worth it i would not recommend this for anyone to get um i know this was the whole popular thing two years ago but i think that's going by the wayside my opinion anyways i think i have to go with the dark voice. I loved it when it came out. I actually use this as a preamp for my home audio system, uh, or audio video system. So it was a two channel uh, TV uh, home theater system. Um, I'm not big into the whole 5.1, whatever, Dolby Atmos, whatever it is. I just had this, I liked it. As a preamp, I thought it worked really well. Um, that's why the, the tubes and the choices that I have here are good for uh, a really good preamp, which then makes a good amp. Um, although, because I don't have any more dynamic driver headphones, or even when I had some, they didn't pair that well. You have to have a certain impedance headphone for this to work. And therefore, while it's a good headphone amplifier, everything that I put onto it really just had a grainy sound just because it wasn't coupling correctly. And... I think it's a great headphone amp. I think for the price, I think it's going up. I think I paid like two thirty nine or something like that, and I think it's like three fifty now. Um, that would be tough stretch, but you know, if you can get this for around two hundred to two thirty, I think this is a very, very good deal. Unfortunately for me, in the direction that I'm going, uh, I, I got to kick this off the list at number seven. So at number seven, Dark Voice is there. I wouldn't kick. I would not sell this. I will keep this. If I ever get a pair of dynamic driver headphones that come out that pair really well, this might move up in the list. This may move over three or four. Now, this is my opinion. This is just what I listen to and what headphones I have at the moment. For you, you this may be your number one, and there is nothing wrong with it. This is a very good headphone amplifier. Love it. And again, I'm not going to sell this. Others you may see up here, I'm going to sell. This one, that's ah, going to stay in my arsenal. Uh, so it is a number seven only because it's very specific in its needs. i5 is you, are you gonna be number six? Carbon X? Shit. No, it is gonna be this guy right here. Kinky Studio THR1. Now I wanna make this very clear, just like 
the dark voice. The problem with the Kinky Studio THR1 is is very specific to headphones, almost identical to the dark voice. These two are, are neck and neck in how you need to use this, and that is the problem. I mean, every I love everything about this. The knob feel is just, oh, it's beautiful. The problem is that you don't see on the manufacturer's website that the actual output impedance of this is 100 ohms. These two are 100 ohms, and this is 50 ohms. Doing the kind of 8 to 1 ratio, you would have to be 200 to 800 ohms for this thing to actually work. And when I did plug in uh, a 600 ohm Bear Dynamic DT880, uh, this thing fried. Um, this thing uh, is actually my second unit. Um, the first unit came in, did not sound right at all. Shipped it back to China. This is in the early stages of the pandemic. Couldn't believe it. Had a very expensive $1,200 amplifier. Send it to China. A couple, two months later, uh, this one showed up. Come in. I'm all set. I plug it in. Um, start listening and poof, cut out. Um, so a real good problem. Sent it over to, I believe it is Turbo Todd in Texas. Did a wonderful job. Had a great conversation with them on the phone. I can't say enough about Kinky, um, Turbo Todd and fixing stuff up. Um, Kinky Studio, I think when I first had a problem, I contacted them on a Sunday or a Saturday. It was like 11 a.m. Saturday by like evening time, you know, with the time difference, um, they had already responded, um, started asking me, I had this thing open. Maybe I'll throw in a few pictures of this thing cracked open because it's absolutely beautiful. This top lid here is like a half inch thick. I mean, it is thick. This is a well-built system. Um, inherently for audiophile sound quality, some of the fuses that are put in are slow burn fuses that you can have problems with. So, um, you know, you, you, you hear people talk about these fuses that you put in the back that are, you know, 40 to $80 a piece. Well, these are built into the actual PCB board and sometimes you can have problems with those. So, um, I'm not complaining about the build quality or any of the problems that I've had. I think Kinky stood behind their product. Um, this thing has been fixed. I love it. I just can't, again, the same with the dark voice. I don't have the headphones that pair well with this. I'm guessing, um, you know, a Sennheiser HD 660, 6XX, those kind of things are be perfect match for this. It's just what I have. I've tried everything. I've tried putting impedance um, adapters on. I've, I, I've literally tried everything to get this to be suitable for me. You know, it does sound okay. It's just when you get the impedance right, things sound a lot better. And that's the same thing that, that's true for the dark voice. So these two, you know, I believe what this is, six going out. Um, nothing wrong with Kinky Studio. Uh, I would love to have one of their stereo amplifiers. Uh, great product. And for the price, I think this, I mean, you, if you want something in your system for a lifetime, this is going to be the product. Some of these other products, they, they might be disposable, right? You may get tired of them after two years, but this you may want to keep around. All right, enough about the Kinky. Great, great headphone amp. Just not for me. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for your headphone system. But for me, it is going out number six, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, number six. All right, this is going to be my number five. Um, I got to tell you, if you look at it, I've owned this since this came out. I still have the wrapper on the front. I do have the optional uh, Bluetooth module uh, for the back here. Um, upside down, sorry about that. So... Um, you do have aux in, out. This thing is, you know, it's an all-in-one. Um, so you have digital in. Um, this thing's a great little unit. 
Um, I love it. You know, this is, I guess, the battle of the chip wars when this came out. So I'm not even sure how powerful this thing is. Uh, you know, it runs my Verum Audio uh, headphones very nice. This is a detail monster. I mean, I love this and I love not being connected. You know, you just have to charge it up. So um, this should be considered if you're out there looking. I mean, honestly, this is probably better than most headphone amplifiers out there, even though obviously it's op amp based. Um, but this thing has so many little features that stand out. I mean, it's just done well, you know, how how everything kind of just works. Um, see it turning on here. You know, the knob feel, it doesn't move really, really easy, which is perfect. So if you put this in your pocket, it's not going to just move on you. I mean, it takes it takes some effort to get this to move. It's protected nice. Um, so you can kind of see here. Um, great little unit. Yeah, so I actually really like this, and that's why it's number five on my list. I mean, I chose this over kinky studio just to put it in perspective so you know i i don't know what the price is right now i got this was brand new so this is the i'm sorry this is the x duo xd05 basic and they have multiple plus and you know how how the tri-fi units do it you know they just keep changing it over time every few months um it's not a problem but just know um that this is a nice little unit and uh, you know, it's a detail monster. I think this is an AKM based, um, um, you know, portable headphone amp DAC. So, you know, this is great to have in your arsenal. You never know when you're going to need this, when you're going to want it. You know, honestly, I don't travel a lot with my headphones. I have IEMs that I take with me, but hey, maybe you want something different. But even if you just want this to be a minimalist on your desk, I mean, this is great. You don't need to have all of this right in front of you. So, you know, it's a matter of perspective and what you want. Um, so we'll go from there. All right. What is number four on the list? Any ideas, takers? I guess it's going to be the Alex Cavalli Liquid Carbon X. Let me pull that one out. I actually think it's fun to actually uh, plug some things in, take them out, put them back in. And this is one of these that I, I've had this since it came out. I actually like it. Um, this is a great little unit. I'm not even sure the power, maybe somewhere around two watts. Um, it, you know, obviously wasn't as powerful and as a THX789 that everyone was had to have in this, I was happy with this. I think it just had a, you know, a slightly warm sound and there was just enough details that came through to make it for just an enjoyable listen. Um, you know, this, at this price point coming in, you know, you're getting balanced inputs, single-ended input, uh, and you get a pass through. So, the only downside of this unit itself is you also, you know, you got a wall wart to power this thing. Um, and, you know, I don't know. When I'm spending the money, I like to have, you know, the power cable connected in, do the, you know, the power uh, inside the box instead of have something. Because, you know, if you get something like this, you may have three or four of them set out. You know, you got all these wall warts and you can't plug them in and, you know, you're just having problems. So... Uh, that is a problem, but this thing sounds to me. I think Cavalli is one of the better uh, headphone amplifier designers out there, and I would not have a problem with buying any of his products, and this just, just goes to show, you know, this is number four on the list, and I absolutely love it. So you can kind of see by my volume dials where I left it to kind of where uh, it's at, and it depends on the headphones, obviously, but um, this is a nice, nice headphone amplifier. So if you find one on the used market, I don't even know if they sell them new over at, uh, at, uh, mass drop anymore or drop or whatever it is, but, um, this is a great headphone amplifier. Nothing wrong with it. All right. So we're done four. We've got three left. 
what's it going to be? Well, for me, shit ass card. I got to go at some point. So no reason to be upset if this is yours and, you know, the Jotunheim here or vice versa. Any of these, you know, I'm just going through and picking the ones uh, by basically how much I use them and what I like. Um, I first had the shit Jotunheim. I love this unit. Um, I mean, I think I've had no inclination to upgrade to the newer version. I was just fine with this. Should ask guard came out. Um, and you know, this third version and, you know, improved continuity and all this good stuff. So I said, you know what, I, I'm just going to do it. So I actually found one used, um, must've been barely brand new for like 140 bucks. And I said, you know what, I'm going to steal it. You know why? This thing's heavy, my gosh. I mean, compared to all these other ones I had up here, I mean, they weigh nothing compared to this thing is a monster, right? You know why? Power's coming in. You know, you got to transform that stuff. Um, so great unit. You know, you're getting to discrete outputs here. I mean, for the price, for the price of an Asgard, you're getting discrete transistor output you're not getting op amps i mean you're getting some really really good quality stuff um i love this you know you you have options here you know you can put in a DAC, you can put in a phono card um nothing wrong with that actually i've thought about putting in multi-bit in here because i think it's worth it so um you know great product um the difference between this and the jotunheim is obviously you get XLR outputs or inputs and outputs with this. So, you know, truth be told, the one thing that I have not talked about yet is the real benefit of headphone amplifiers is that you can use them as preamplifiers. And I don't know why. Someone please down below, tell me why headphone amplifiers make such good preamplifiers. Is it just because of the attention paid to the ampli amplification stages that you get this level of quality. I mean, trust me, if you don't believe me, um, if your stereo has high uh, home theater bypass, put it in that and plug this in and then hear it. Hear what I'm talking about. Because what I had this first and then I moved this into my main system and I've had you know, I don't want to go upgrade to a Saga or a Freya. I just absolutely love this. And I honestly can't live without it. And I'm not going to go pay 700 to to $1,000 for a Freya when this thing sounds great. So this is why I have this. is because I use this. I used it mainly as a headphone amplifier. Then it went into my main system. So now I have multiple inputs, right? I've got balanced and single-ended, so I can hook up my turntable. I can hook up my DAC, and I'm taken care of. That's the only two inputs that I need. That works out. So for me, it was, hey, let's take a chance. Let's get the ass guard. And, well, I love it. I mean, I absolutely love this headphone amplifier. Um, I think the difference between the two, you know, sound-wise, they say this is improved, but, eh. It's tough to hear. You know, you're getting four watts and a Jotunheim, two watts, and the Asgard three. So what headphones are you using? Really would determine which one you want. You're running balanced, you're running single-ended, really. I mean, but the budget, I mean, come on. You cannot beat the sound coming from this headphone amplifier. Warm, lush, thick, not overly lush, not overly thick, just the perfect balance. I think shit, they tune it in such a great way that I just, I'm obviously a big fan. I've got two of them sitting right here. So now there's not much more to say because obviously we just talked about number three. So obviously number two is going to be the Jotunheim. I do like the silver finish. I'm going to say that up front. I know they're charging more for it now. And you know what? I'm fine with it. I love the silver finish. Um, doesn't matter if I find a good deal, it's in black, I'm going to buy it because I like shit products. I mean, you can see the difference in, in you know, inputs and outputs that you get with the Jotunheim. Um, and actually, you know, I would love to put, you know, a card in here. Let's 
It's letting you take in all that eye candy. It's great. So this is a, uh, a really good uh, headphone amplifier. I love it. Um, you know, really, if I didn't have the Pro I Can, this would be it. So, uh, you know, this for me is just uh, great. Great headphone amplifier, great pre-amplifier for your main system. So you can't go wrong with this, really. So I'm going to put this back, and we're going to talk about the winner. That's right, the big number one. So obviously I have this connected. I'm not going to disconnect it. Um, this thing gets brutally hot, especially when you're running tubes. So what, you know, I, I can't say enough about iFi products. Um, I got the iFi um, iPhone 02. I would love to have the three. I just think the price between $500 and $1,000 is outstanding to go that much. But that being said, I think the products are worth it. I've got a lot of iFi products and this tops it off. You know, some of the, the choices that they're still making, even with the newly released signature with the twin outputs, I mean, that's dated. But you know what? This thing is the Swiss Army knife of, of for audiophiles. It's the Swiss Army knife for audiophiles. I mean, you get, number one, great headphone amplifier. I think, what is it, 14 watts? I mean, 14 watts. If you do the ratio thing of ohms and that, this is like a 140-watt amplifier. I mean, come on. This thing is absolutely amazing. You know, you've got the X base, not just one button, but you get three different versions. You have the 3D technology. I'll see if I can get down there and show that to you. So you've got the X base, three different settings. You've got the 3D, uh, which quite honestly, I don't kind of like that much. Um, you know, you have four inputs. Three single-ended, one balanced. I mean, it's crazy. And what I recently found out about this, um, so this has been my main system, my main headphone amplifier. I've not taken it out. Um, you know, I had the GE 5670 tubes in there, and avoid your warranty if you take them out. And you know what? Uh, for some people, this is what. $2,300, something like that, $2,200, $2,300, brand new. Luckily, you can find these on the used market for somewhere mm, about 1000 For $1,000, this is the steal. This is the deal. This is the one you have to have. Obviously, with anything used, buyer beware. But I will say that I would take this any day over anything I've had um, because, you know, you're getting three different kind of amplifiers in one. So you got the more clinical, solid state, you have tube mode and then tube plus mode. And what I found when running this as a preamplifier, um, trying to run in a brand new um, photo preamplifier, and I had a real problem. And so I was plugging this in, using it as a preamplifier and going into a power amp. And, um, you know, it sounded so great. But I didn't, what I noticed that when I was using this as a headphone amplifier, that the, the, the tubiness really wasn't coming through. It wasn't coming through like the dark voice or like other tube amps. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't three-dimensional. Um, so all you could tell is you're adding more red lights coming out of here. The heat generated was a lot. Um, and it reduces your power output. Um, so I've had this kick off and the little iFi light over here. If you see, it turns red. Um, you know, so that was a problem. So um, actually, I'll turn on the tubes for you. So you can see them lighting up. Um, but anyways, going back to this thing. So um, running the running it as a preamplifier, you really, really notice the, the, the tubiness of it. Not when you're running headphones, but when you run it... As a preamplifier, you really notice the tubes. I didn't like the 5670s from GE. They're cheap. You can probably get them for 20 bucks a piece, I think, right now, which in the tube world is pretty cheap. Um, so I went out and I got what I thought were getting Western, Western Electric um, 396As, um, the, the 
very sought after tubes. Actually, the guy delivered me Bendix, uh, J A E J A N, Jans, which are like impossible to find. So, um, you know, I've been using them, running them in, and I'll be using them as a preamplifier pretty soon. So, hey, sorry about that, I had an interruption. So, we're back. So, you know, we're near the end. Obviously, we've got number one right here. It is the most expensive. Is that unfair to, let's say, you know, a hundred dollar item? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it's, it's not proportional, but that is the way it is. You know, for me, what I like, the type of music that I like, uh, the things that I want to evaluate, especially for reviews, this is totally worth it. If it were for you, would you buy it? You know, this may be a number eight on your list just because it's so expensive. So just understand it's going to be, you know, based on the circumstances of the individual. So you could totally switch this around and say, what's the best value? And maybe it's the shit ass card. Right. So you have to put everything in perspective. This is based on, you know, my needs, my use case and what I'm doing. And I absolutely love this. So I just want to give you a show, you know, uh, one last look at the tubes. They're running here. So you can see them right in there. Again, these are the Bendix uh, JAE Jans. All right, guys. Well, I really appreciate it. All you sticking around for this lengthy review, discussion, shootout, whatever. Uh, anyways, um, I hope you guys have a great day. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Help me grow. Uh, you know, just got over a thousand mark and I'd like to get to 2,000, 3,000. Keep growing this. Hopefully you have people sending me products for review versus me buying them maybe i'll do a patreon pretty soon um where i'll do behind the scenes and do some you know a little more uh active discussion let's say uh not so um in the open domain kind of discussion so tell me your thoughts and opinions down below all right bye